Hello, valued viewers. I hope you are all doing very well. So this video will cover one of the more interesting locomotive designs in railroad history, which is, uh, in this case, the Union Pacific uh, GTEL locomotive, with GTEL standing for Gas Turbine Electric. So it was in the 1930s when railroads began looking at turbine-driven uh, locomotives as a way to increase fuel economy. Turbines used at power plants were very efficient, but finding a way to mount one in a locomotive proved very problematic, and this is what we learned with the Chesapeake and Ohio M1. So General Electric had actually built a turbine locomotive for the Union Pacific Railroad in 1939, but like the M1 for the uh, C&O Railroad, the complexity of the design just made it unreliable, and it was deemed a failure, just like the M1. So then, after World War II, Union Pacific asked General Electric to build on its experience designing gas turbine uh, airplane engines and construct a gas-powered turbine for a locomotive. A prototype was built in 1948 and was judged successful, so three orders of gas turbines were built between 1952 and 1961, and these culminated in a three-unit, 8,500 horsepower locomotive that were essentially like jet engines on, on a railroad track. And when these were in operation, they actually sounded like a jet airliner as well. So much so that folks in uh, California couldn't stand them uh, running in their state because they thought it was just simply too loud. The GTELs also burn fuel at an enormous rate. However, the Bunker C fuel oil that they used was cheap enough to where it somewhat offset the cost of the enormous amount of fuel that these locomotives used. And another quirk about the GTELs not to the good was it, they were found to use nearly as much fuel when they idled as they were at full throttle, meaning that the railroad had to keep them in constant use while fire, fired up. And Bunker C fuel oil was problematic in itself because it was so thick, you had to have a heating element to heat the fuel first before it could even be used. And it was also very difficult to handle as well. So eventually, Union Pacific switched from Bunker C fuel oil to a modified number 6 heavy fuel oil, which contained fewer pollutants and solvents. The GTELs also had a problem with soot buildup and blade erosion in the turbines that was caused by a corrosive ash uh, that got into the system. So to solve this, uh, they made changes to the air intake systems on the production uh, turbine locomotives that improved the quality of the air that reached the turbines. And that went a long way towards solving the wear on the turbine blades themselves and kept them uh, in a running operation state uh, for a longer period of time. And a side note that you all will love, the Union Pacific actually intended the use uh, of these gas turbine locomotives to replace the big boys, which were scheduled to be taken out of service. So another drawback to the gas turbine is that they required high speeds to achieve their maximum efficiency, which simply wasn't practical on most of the railroads. But to the positive of using a gas turbine was that they did not have the serious mechanical issues that the uh, steam turbine had, uh, like we saw in the M1. And the Union Pacific decided to go ahead with the GTEL program simply because most of their track lines were relatively straight and the main lines were you know flat to run on so and that would allow for the model to retain high speeds while also being able to operate it at a relatively cheap uh, rate so to give you all an idea of what it took to just to heat the bunker sea fuel oil it had to be heated uh, or preheated i should say to 200 degrees fahrenheit and filtered before it could be used and also an interesting side note was when, oper when in operation, the GTELs would shoot the exhaust out at 150 miles an hour, and it was 850 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So it's safe to say you wouldn't want to be a hobo anywhere near the uh, locomotive itself. So because California outlawed the GTELs to be used in their state, the runs that the GTELs ran were... Uh, usually between Cal uh, Council Bluff, Iowa, and Ogden, Utah. And Union Pacific's second order of gas turbine locomotives started to arrive in 1954. Uh, That's the second generation. Now, these second generation GTELs were very similar to the first, but the biggest and most significant development was the fact that 
Union Pacific can now control the trailing units from the lead locomotive, although only 19 of the locomotives were actually coupled this way. And Union Pacific's third and final generation of these detail locomotives were numbered 1 to 30, and they were very different from the first two generations. Uh, the first one was that they carried a C-C plus C-C wheel arrangement, where the other two generations were B-B plus B-B. And also this third generation featured two semi-permanently coupled units enabling a single unit to produce an incredible and record 8,500 horsepower and theoretically they could put out 10,000 horsepower. And this particular generation was incredibly loud simply because they ran tur two turbine uh, in each unit. So if the state of California didn't like the first two generations of the GTELs, then they would have gotten a big kick out of the, this third generation and really loved them. After racking up well over 1 million service miles, the last run of a gas turbine locomotive took place on December 26, 1969. Their running gear was recycled into the GEU 50 series of locomotives. Trucks, traction motors, and span bolsters were... Uh, from locomotives 51 to, to 75 were used in the construction of a U50. And trucks and traction motors from the locomotives uh, in the 1 to 30 series were used in the construction of U50C. Several of the tenders were retained and converted to hold water for uh, maintenance of uh, way purposes and later uh, to be used in Union Pacific's operating steam locomotives, UP44 and UP4014. So the prototype and the first and second generations were all scrapped by 1969. And uh, two units of the third generation survived today. Uh, the first one is number 18, which is at the Illinois Railroad Museum. And the number 26, uh, 26B, is at Ogden uh, Union Station in Ogden, Utah. So out of all the what one could consider as an experimental locomotive, the Union Pacific details were by far the most successful, obviously, with their over 1 million miles uh, of service uh, miles ran. And they just didn't have the breakdown history that the uh, steam turbines did and whatnot as well. So, and they made them work. So, they weren't perfect, uh, but they did, in, in fact, make them work. And if you all can go see one at one of the uh, locations I specified, it's really worth uh, a gander at. Uh, they're very impressive machines. And of course, there's a lot that I didn't talk about uh, regarding these locomotives, as is with many other locomotives that I've done. Um, and be rest assured that Several locomotives, including this one, will get further vi uh, videos in the future. Uh, this one is just a, more or less an, an introductory uh, to this type of locomotive. So having said that, the following specifications apply to the Union Pacific third generation of GTEL locomotive. The manufacturer was General Electric. They entered uh, service uh, 1958 to 1961. The propulsion obviously is gas turbine. The horsepower uh, produced, actually produced, was 8,500 horsepower, rated up to 10,000 horsepower. The revolutions per minute was 4,860. Auxiliary power was provided by the Cooper Bessemer diesel engine. Car, by, car body styling was by General Electric's engineering department. The overall length of the uh, locomotive was 132 feet and 6 inches. The height of the locomotive was 15 feet 4 inches. The width was 10 feet 7 inches. The overall weight of the locomotive was actually a very light 551,000 pounds. I was always thinking that this locomotive weighed nearly a million, but it doesn't. Roughly half of that. Uh, the trucks were C minus C plus C minus C. Truck type were floating bolster. The wheelbase was 14 feet 6 inches per truck. The wheel size were 40 inches. Traction motors were General Electric 752, 12 of them. Traction, generation, uh, traction generator was GE 576. The gear ratio was 74 to 18. Tractive effort was 240,000 pounds of starting and 145,000 pounds at 18 miles an hour. And the top speed was 65 miles an hour. And with that, I'll wrap up this first video on the Union Pacific 
GTEL Locomotive by simply saying thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't done so. Both help the channel grow uh, substantially. And so, uh, turn the notifications on if you want to see my all of my future updates. And also, uh, if you want to support the channel, uh, visit our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited at Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.